Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. And good morning. Good morning. All morning. you listeners out there in listening land, we once again coming from you to the little corner at 1601 Monroe, St. Elmore Baptist Church from Dr. David Wayne Cabot. Cabot is our pastor, amen. So wherever you are this morning, put on your listening ears, open up your heart, and let's have some church. Amen, 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 amen. amen. And one thing I want to tell you, I love you, God love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it but love me back. That's all right. But amen. even if you don't love me, I'm going to still love you. So I want you to do one thing for me today. Find somebody on your block, somebody in the neighborhood, even if you go shopping. Look at somebody and say from your heart, I love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Once again, I say we're going to have some church this morning because we're here to magnify his holy name. We're here to uplift his name. We're here to give him some praise because he's worthy. He's worthy each and every day when he puts breath in our body, food on our table, clothes on our back, shoes on our feet. That gives us something to shout about because he didn't have to do it, but he did. And we all just give him some praise. We all just give him some thanks. We all just look to the hills where we know cometh our help because all our help cometh from above because once again, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy worthy to be praised. Amen. And amen. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is coming out of the book of Colossians, chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. Amen. I'll give you a minute to get there. Colossians, chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. Amen. And it reads, Master, give us your servant, that which is just and equal, and knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Continue in prayer and yes, watching Lord. the same with thanksgiving. Yes, yes. Without praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance yes, to speak the mystery of Christ, yes, Lord, yes. for which I am also in bond, yes, yes. that I may that I may make it manifest you, as Lord. I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech always with let your speech always be let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. May God bless the reader to hear do it with most and holy words. Bow your heads, please. Father God, Lord Jesus, I come before you once again, one of your humble servants, Lord Jesus. I give thanks to you, Lord Jesus. I thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Each and every day, I thank you. And Lord Jesus, I just want to say that you continue to watch over us. I pray for the pastor, him and his family. I pray that you continue to lead him and guide him to give us greater heights, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lead us to greater heights. Lord Jesus, I just want to say, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Because you watched, thank you, thank you watched you. over me last night while I slept in slumber. Yeah. You touched me and woke me up to a bright and beautiful day, which I'll never see yes, again. Lord. Thank you. I got food on my table. Clothes on my back, shoes on my feet, and grace and love in my heart. I just want to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. And Lord Jesus, we just want to say, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Everything what you've done for us, Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you. And Lord Jesus, we want to say, we, we want you to bless the speaker of this house this morning, Lord Jesus. As he bring your word, Lord Jesus. Use him as a tool in your ministry. And prop them up on both sides, Lord Jesus. We want to say thank you. Thank you. If you get too high, Lord Jesus, bring them down. If you get too low, Lord Jesus, bring them up. Prop them on both sides, Lord Jesus, where he be steady and strong in your word. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you use him as a tool in your ministry. For these are a few of the many things we pray, we ask, we believe, we have faith. We thank you, we love you. In Jesus Christ's name, praise God. Amen. 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 Thank you.
Good morning, St. Elmo. Good morning. Good morning to everybody that's watching. Truly, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. You know, I just thank God for being here, for waking me up this morning. You know, I know that somewhere in this world, someone didn't wake up this morning, you know. So anytime you get up in the morning, in your right mind, uh, just period, it is a blessing, you know. And uh, I just ask that you all pray with me and pray for me as I uh, sing this song this morning. This song has been on my heart all morning, all week. Then I called Sister Gaffney this morning, and she told me she woke up this morning singing the same song. And I said, well, I guess it is confirmation then for this song to be sung. So you all just pray with me. Thank you. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing that God is real. Oh, I can feel Him in my soul. Some folks may doubt, some folks may scorn. Oh. 
I don't know what I do without the Lord. Woo! I don't know what I do without the Lord. When I look around the sea, what the Lord has done for me. this morning. Yes, Lord. Come on. Without the Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We yes. can leave Thank you, Lord Jesus. Preach this morning. Mm. Without, Without the, the Lord. Lord. singing that same song. Where would I be without the Lord? I know we could have been dead and gone. But I know he blessed us to see yet another day of life. That's more than enough to be thankful. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As y'all can tell that, uh, I'm not Dr. David Wayne Cavett Sr. I am Deacon Tony Favors. I will be bringing a word today from the Lord. But Pastor wants to apologize for not being here today. He had some unforeseen issues that came up. But just do know and believe that uh, he's still doing God's work. All right? 
And we all know that you ain't got to be in the house of the Lord to do God's work because a lot of God's work goes beyond these four walls. That's where it starts. But just keep him in prayer right now. Also today we have uh, one of our very own members, Mother Brooks. Her birthday will be in a couple of days. So just continue to keep her in prayer because the Lord has blessed her to see many years and we pray that she continue to be have many more years to come all right we just pray that we have the same spirit the same love the same strength as she does at her age because mother Brooks will run from the front to the back you know what I'm saying and it won't lose no breath and, and, and that's an inspiration in his own, all right? But yes, uh, the Lord has blessed me with a word today. And I just pray and hope that it touches somebody. Father God, I come to you right now, Father. With a bowed down head and a humble Lord, you blessed me this morning with your tender finger of love, Father God, and you touched me and you woke me up this morning, Father. You allowed my feet to touch solid ground today, Father God, and I'm thankful to be amongst the living today, Father God. But Father, as I get ready to bring your word, Father God, to your people, Father God, I just pray that you just prop me up on all leaning sides right now, Father God. If I get a little bit low, Father God, just push me up just a little bit, Father. And if I get a little bit too high, Father God, just push me down, Father God. Put me where you want me to be, Father God. And Father God, just, I know you've already anointed me in your word today, Father God. And I am so thankful right now, Father God. And I pray that your word goes forward today with power, clarity, understanding, and conviction, Father God. And you already know, Father, that I pray and ask that you let your will be done today, Father. And as your word go forward, Father, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight of, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And everybody say amen, amen, and amen. All right, I know we are looking for a word, and I know the Lord has blessed me with one today. So if we all have our Bibles, I ask that you stand in the reading of God's word and we'll be coming out of the book of Matthew chapter 18 verses 19 and 20 again book of Matthew chapter 18 verses 19 and 20 and you already know what I'm going to say because when I'm up here you know <laughs> It's all about loving somebody, right? Every day you should wake up. If somebody is near you, around you, or close to you, just look to them right now and say, I love you. I love you. And if somebody is out there and don't have nobody around them, just know that I love you and God loves you as well. Amen. Are we all there? Right. Then the God's reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 19 through 20, reads, Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, 
There am I in the midst of them. Bless the readers, the doers, and the hearers of his most holy word. Amen. You may have a seat. Mm. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Now, we all know that the Lord is always an ever-present God no matter where you at. Now, it does say that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. But don't forget, he's always there with you, no matter what, whether you're there by yourself or not. All right? But when we look at these two verses that was just read, there are a couple of important pieces that we need to take from them. The first is, we all should know that Jesus is speaking in these two verses. And Jesus is telling you that if two of you on earth agree about anything that they may ask for, it will be done. But it must be done in the name of Jesus the Christ. Second thing is that where there are two or three gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. It's not saying that when you pray as an individual that the Lord isn't present. But Jesus looked ahead to a new day. And he would be present with the followers, not in body, but through the Holy Spirit. In the body of believers, the church, the sincere agreement of two people in prayer is more powerful than the superficial agreement of a thousand because Christ's Holy Spirit is with them. Two or more believers filled with the Holy Spirit will pray according to God's will, not their own but God's will. Thus, their request will be granted. And we should just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. And with that being said, I know that we are all looking for a title or a subject right now. And the title is The Power of Prayer in Numbers. Power of prayer in numbers. And we actually have a subtopic today, and it's going to be corporate prayer. Because we as a church, when we come together and pray for individuals or for certain topics, we come together as corporate prayer. And we know that things work better when you have large numbers. Again, we see in these two verses that a promise was made by the Lord that when two or three come together in agreement, believing and having faith and combining their prayers, then he is there in the midst, which will present an amplified effectiveness. We are a church with members of more than two or three. So just imagine if we all came together as one, on one accord, in prayer. What would happen? Mm, that's what I say. Mm. <laughs> what would happen? But let me tell you this. Look what happened to Peter in the book of Acts, chapter 12 and 5. It says that Peter was kept in a prison, but the church... But the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Peter was supposed to be executed. But it says believers were praying for Peter's safety. So now the earnest prayer of the church significantly affected the outcome of these events. Now, let me ask this question. We are a praying church, right? 
we are a body of believers, right? Hmm. Okay, I just had to ask that question. You know what I'm saying? I just had to know where your heart is at and where my church folk is at. You know what I'm saying? Now, now we as a believer in Christ may not understand how prayer works, but God consistently commands us to pray. And you can find that in Luke 18 and 1. In Peter's situation, the Lord responded to the prayers of believers and sent an angel to release Peter from prison. All for God's glory and to fulfill his plan. Mm. The Lord do things for his fulfillment. So when the Lord bless you, it's for who? Come on now. Now we know that by being a Christian and being a follower of our Lord and Savior, that we would have many people that may go against us in many spiritual warfare battles. Many people may try to fight these battles on their own. And many people will realize that they may not work. They may not win that battle. But think about fighting those battles through prayer and using the weapons that God equipped you with. But not only use them, but use them in numbers, meaning more than just one person praying, but have many people praying together. Mm. When you have many people using the Lord's weapons, such as prayer, faith, hope, and love, God's word, and the Holy Spirit, where can we go wrong? For scripture already tells us that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4 and 12. When you pray God's word as a collection or in numbers, it is more than just a simple collection of words from God. It is a path for communicating his ideas. It is living, life-changing, and dynamic power that works in us. Picture a surgeon's knife. We know how swift and how precise it cuts. Now picture 10, 20, 40, or even 50 of those surgical knives cutting through your problems and your situations, your enemy. That is how prayer works. When you pray together as a group or family, or better yet, as a church family, as a St. Elmo family, they are precise and straight to the point, and they get more accomplished in many numbers. But look what the apostle Peter wrote in 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. By your brotherhood in the world. What Peter is trying to tell us here is that we need to stay praying as a church family, for we have a real adversary, such as the devil, roaming to seek and destroy one of our family members. When one is sick, when one is young, or just not alert, that's where the support of our Christian family prayers come in at for intercessory prayer, for the numbers, or by the numbers, meaning many members coming together as one. Yeah. Now, we do know that some people may not like being around others, let alone praying with others. But as a Christian, our faith alone should call us to assemble together, especially in prayer. 
In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, 24 and 25, Scripture tells us, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. We may still be in the midst of the pandemic and not being able to feel comfortable being around everyone, but glory be to God that he allowed people to make audio and video equipment so as to still be able to come together as a church, as a church family in fellowship, encourage, motivate, and to help other Christians that need that support. Now, if we look at this, the author of Hebrews must have seen or felt that many Christians have been perfectly content to be by themselves. It seems to be the same today. But when you do that, you are doing wrong in the sight of the Lord and his congregation. So the Bible tells us not to forsake the assembling together that we might not forfeit the many blessings that ourselves believing in our congregation. Again, if you are one of those that do not feel comfortable in assembling, in the sanctuary, many churches are blessed to continue to assemble together as church family through prayer conference calls. Did I just say that? Huh? Many churches are blessed to continue to assemble together as church family through prayer conference calls or through Bible study on a conference phone call. Again, praying and studying God's word as a church family does wonders. For he says, again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything that asked for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in the name, there am I with them. The Lord said, where two or three gather in my name, there am I with him. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, reads, encourage one another and build one another up. And when we come together as a church family to pray and to seek the heart of God, individuals are encouraged. You have to understand that life throws us curveballs every day, Sister Judy. And some people need encouraged every day for the struggles that they may be going through. And as they go through those struggles and start to listen to other believers, when they're on a prayer conference, praying on a prayer line, they get refocused on God and regain their strength that they had lost. Their faith becomes strengthened because the Holy Spirit has comforted them through the prayer of others through the prayer of others this is why the writer of Hebrews chapter 10 and 25 remind us to not forsake meeting together as you can see that our faith can get fragile and doubt may start to creep in corporate prayer and worship can strengthen us as we lean into the faith of others. The apostle John wrote that we can have the confidence that if we ask in prayer, God hears us and answers us. And you can find that in 1 John chapter 5, 14 through 15. However, often when prayers go seemingly unanswered, for a long time, doubt creeps in. When we pray with other believers and experience God moving, someone may have prayed and the person may have heard something and now the Holy Spirit has brought back to their attention. Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. That's one of the good things about praying in numbers. The Holy Spirit will move and touch who needs to be reassured or healed. The Apostle James instructed us that when we are sick, we are to call the elders and have them pray as united front over us. James 5, 14 and 15. These two verses are telling us that a person should not face their illness, illnesses alone. Members of the church body should be able to count on other members for support. Can somebody count on y'all? Can St. Elmo members count on another St. Elmo member? Are you that member that can be counted on? Verse 15 goes on to say that the prayer offered in faith does not refer to the faith of the sick person, but to the faith of the people praying. God heals people with faith. With faith, present the needs to him and all prayers are subject to his will and greater plan. It is the Lord who makes us well. But God wants our prayers as a church family, prayers in numbers, to be a part of his healing process. So surrounding ourselves with strong prayer warriors strengthens our faith and even brings healing. When we come together as a church family in prayer, do you know that we may have different age groups, different stages of spiritual growth amongst each other? When this happens, we tend to learn from one another. A prime example may be when one prays, Matthew 6 and 10, and it says, your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When someone prays that they are not resigning themselves to fate, but requesting that God will accomplish his perfect purpose in this world as well as in the next. And how does God accomplish his will? He does it through his willing followers. His church family that prays together. When we pray this part, we offer ourselves as God's available servants. Asking him to guide us, lead us, and give us the means to accomplish his purposes. Just as, he, just as Jesus taught the disciples to pray, Matthew 6 and 10, when young believers listen to the prayers of the mature and faithful, their pray or their faith may grow. Corporate prayer or prayers in numbers moves us beyond simple requests for ease or health of blessing. Though those are worthy requests, though, and teaches us to ask instead that we might be conformed to the likeness of Christ. Hmm. And you can find that Romans 8 and 29. The Lord wants us to be made like Christ, 1 John 3 and 2. We become more like Christ when we come together as one in numbers by reading and heeding his word and by studying his life on earth through the gospels, by spending time in prayer, by being filled with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say that you have to learn together to be like Christ, but it helps in your learning. If the Lord wants to use you and many others to be taught by someone younger, so be it. It is God's will to do or vice versa, where the younger will learn from the others. But we should come together in numbers to be taught and to teach others. Since the beginning of the pandemic, many churches have gotten into a habit of having corporate prayer or even coming together as church family and praying together. And that is a good thing because having a set time and schedule to come together as one family praying acknowledges that we are weak and that we need God 
for our strength. When you make it a habit to come together and pray as a church, it may teach us that two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their toil. Ecclesiastics 4 and 9. When we come together in prayer, cooperating and praying together as has advantages. Life is designed for companionship and not loneliness. When we, when, when we are here on earth, we are here on earth not to serve ourselves, however, but to serve God and others. And that's one of the main points of praying as a church family, to serve God and to serve others. Help them through their need. Help them through their wants. Also know this, that when a church comes together in prayer, that it builds unity amongst each other. Corporate or family prayer connects us around a common purpose, and that is to seek God's heart. As we seek him together, there is togetherness. When we come together, it helps us to not go in our own direction. Our prayers become less selfish and more focused on God's will and purpose for our lives and the lives of others. As we pray as a unified group with one heart and one mouth, in one mind, we glorify the Lord Jesus Christ in a way that is unparalleled to any other method. Romans 15 and 6. As a church family comes together in prayer, be reminded to make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond on peace. Ephesians 4 and 3. To build unity as a church is one of the Holy Spirit's important roles. He leads. But we as a church have to be willing to be led and to do our part to keep the peace. We do that by focusing on God and helping others and not just focusing on ourselves. If you didn't know, coming back to you, Sister Judy, if you didn't know, St. Elmo has a powerful family of prayer, a powerful family of prayer warriors. Our prayer warriors come together when, Sister Judy, every Tuesday night at 7.15, <laughs> central time that is. And I'm pretty sure if you look on the screen, it's probably scrolling right across right now. Uh, it's Bible study and it is prayer conference. And it has the number right there. Try it sometime. If you need prayer or want to be a part of the church that prays together, feel free to join in. Because, you know, we have a few topics such as we pray for all leaders of the country. We don't even know them, but we pray for them. All saints of God. We don't know them, but we still pray for them. Doctors, nurses, and first responders, we don't even know them, but they help other people. So we pray for them. Just to name a few. I said this to say that as a church that prays together, we have gained family members and friends from different states who come to fellowship and praise his mighty name. Our church family encourages one another. We have found unity in the midst of setbacks. We send intercessory prayers up for people that we don't even know. So the Lord can heal them, bless them, and hopefully lead somebody to be saved. There is power in numbers, people. And the Lord said, again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Come on, people, let's come together and pray for one another. If you don't know that by praying with others may invest in God's work to bring people to faith in Jesus Christ. We see in Acts that the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Acts 2 and 47. As we pray, the Lord works to draw others to himself. John says, and this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything or according to his will, 
he hears us. First John 5 and 14. And Peter tells us that the Lord does not wish that, that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Second Peter 2, 8 and 9. We know that when we pray for the salvation of others, it is for the Lord's desire that all would repent and his will that some should be saved. We can join him in his work of redemption as we pray as a church family and as we pray with numbers for those who are lost. We need to live a life of faith and believe that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. We need to know that praying and talking to the Lord amongst two or three is key to having an intimate and fulfilling relationship with God. We need to know that prayer changes lives. Know that God is willing to hear our prayers and wants to answer them to change not only our lives, but the lives of others as well. you hadn't heard anything today, haven't heard anything that I said today, hmm. just know that a church that prays together stays together. No matter what an individual is going through, no matter what the church may be going through, no matter what any family member may be going through, if we all come together as one in one accord, and pray together in numbers, yeah. Woo! just think what the Lord will do for us. Mm. And as I bring this to an end, may it not be said of the church today, St. Elmo, you do not have because you do not Come together, family. Pray together. Be a blessing to others. Because the Lord has blessed us. The Lord has brought us from a mighty long way. Just look at yourself. Look at your family members. Look at the person beside you. You don't know what they've been through. But you can best believe, look at them now. Standing strong. Because the Lord blessed them. The Lord bless them through somebody else's prayers. If you don't know how to pray yourself, just believe. All you got to do is talk to the Lord. Have a conversation with the Lord. Ask somebody to pray. But when you ask somebody, make sure, make sure they're the right ones. All right? You don't want nobody praying against you. You want somebody to pray for you. Hmm. Now, we already know about this person or this man or this mighty, mighty man who will answer all prayers. He knows what you're going to ask for before you even ask. He will supply all your needs. But when you pray to him, you got to stand and wait on him. Because he ain't going to give you everything that you want when you want it. We have to know that some things is a no. Some things is a not yet. But listen to him. Wait on him. But this man came down from 42 generations. This 
man had no faults. This man had no sins. Mm. But you already know that this man was led up a hill called Calvary. And when he got on top of that hill, they nailed his hands to the cross. They nailed his feet to the cross. And they stood this cross up high. And when you look at that cross, his arms were spread out wide. And his feet. But this man named Jesus, he died on this cross to save you, to save me. So we may have everlasting life. But when they brought him down off of that cross, they put him in a borrowed tomb. And we already know that anything borrowed, you have to give back. So he, 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 he laid in that borrowed tomb all day Friday night. He laid in that tomb all Saturday night. But we already know that early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, just like this morning, early Sunday morning, he got up out of that tomb and he had all power in his hands. And since he had all power in his hands, he would be able to bless you. He'd be able to help you. He give you everything that you need. You don't need for nothing. It's already taken care of. All you have to do is obey him. Follow him. Call on him. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help my church family. We already know that somebody needs help today. Somebody is scared to give their life to Christ. Somebody don't know how to do it. But that's what we are here for as a church family. We come together as a family to encourage somebody, to strengthen their faith, to give them hope. We come together as a church family, as support. Let them know that they are loved. If they family don't love them, if they friends don't love them, St. Elmo loves them. That's what we are here for. And if you are one of those people that don't know Christ, just give your life to him today. And if you don't know how to give your life to Christ today, just repeat after me. Just repeat after me. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and mine. But he rose. And if you believe in your heart, and if you confess with your mouth, then you too are saved. It's just that simple and that easy. Hmm. Don't ever be ashamed to say you know and love Jesus Christ. He's not ashamed of you. door, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. His arms are open wide. You can do it right now wherever you're at. Whether you're driving, sitting in your car, sitting next to Sister Judy, 
Come on. He is right here ready to receive. It is ours to offer, yours to choose. This day has been recorded. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Once again, we thank you all for being here with us today. We pray that the Lord has blessed you with the word today. And if you need prayer, don't hesitate. Again, get on prayer conference with us every Tuesday night at 715. If you don't want to pray, you don't have to pray. All you have to do is listen and let the Holy Spirit move through others to help you through your situation. But we thank you once again. Continue to be safe. Continue to be blessed. Know that I love you and God loves you as well.